Podcasting out of Alliance Wrestling Studios, pontificating on pro wrestling, the innovator of talk NWA, he is J.K. Dang, man, this is not a good day for J-Cal. Are you guys seeing anything on the YouTube page? Because it doesn't look like it. <laughs> Did you see the intro? Is YouTube working? Can someone confirm for me? Because I can't see it on my end. Anybody? Can anybody, uh, anybody confirm for me? You guys on Instagram, you're not watching YouTube, are you? What is going on? I don't I don't get it. It's working now. Okay. So there is a little bit of a delay. That's all right, guys. Okay. So 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 sorry for the the uh sp uh well, the slow start, but we're working with new technology here, so you got to give me uh, cut me some slack. Now, as you can see, the video here, uh, wait, to my, uh, what is that, my right? That would be Chris Candido. Now, uh, some of you guys not, might remember Chris Candido as Skip uh, in the Body Donnas, the WWE. He was a former tag team champion. Some of you might remember him from his days in ECW as part of the Triple Threat. Some of you might remember him from his time in Smoky Mountain Wrestling. Now, the, the native of Edison, New Jersey, uh, was a former world's heavyweight champion. And we celebrate Chris Candido on this day, this day of uh, remembrance he passed away 15 years ago uh, this day. He was born in 1972, so he wasn't a very old man when he passed away. In fact, it was kind of a result of uh, having a, um, a pneumonia, but it was complications from an injury that he received while wrestling in Puerto Rico. Um, I see some of your comments already, so we'll jump to some of them. Chris Drummond says, Chris Candido was an NWA World Tag Team Champion on Impact. That is correct as well. He was also in uh, the time that he passed away. He was an NWA Midwest heavyweight champion. And back in those days, the NWA Midwest was a quite a um, an important championship. It was the title that kind of launched the Sheik into main event status, uh, getting him an opportunity to wrestle for the North American Championship. And many believe that Chris Candido was going to take that NWA Mid-American Championship and uh, Mid-American Heavyweight Championship and parlay that into something bigger with the National Wrestling Alliance while simultaneously working for Total Nonstop Action. However, things uh, kind of hit a curveball. Of course, the injury that he sustained and then died from complications from uh, pneumonia. Uh, Chris Candido um, actually had more success in the NWA after his World Heavyweight Championship run than, um, than before. And... It, it it's one of those things where uh, I think that it, had Chris Candido lived, I think we would have seen so much more out of the former body Donna. Now you have to remember he was a TNA X Division champion. Wait, do I have that right? No, no, I think I have that wrong. He was and let's see, he was the NWA Midwestern Heavyweight Championship Midwest not Midwestern, Midwest heavyweight champion. Uh, he was a former NWA world heavyweight champion. He was the guy that picked the title up after Shane Douglas threw it to the ground, only to lose to Dan the Beast Severin. Um, shortly after that, he made his way to the WWE, was a multi-time um, WWE tag team champion, made his way to ECW where he started teaming with Lance Storm and... Uh, they also held the ECW Tag Team Championships. Moved on to 
XPW, where he was an XPW world champion very briefly. Uh, then he came to WCW, kind of got back into the main stage of the national presence, and was the world cruiserweight champion. Uh, that lineage kind of extends today to the WWE's uh, 205 Live program and that cruiserweight title. And then, of course, uh, he worked his dates with uh, Impact Wrestling and... I mean, in between that, he was the NWA New Jersey heavyweight champion. Um, and, of course, he held that uh, that WCW cruiserweight title for quite some time as well. Um, all of which kind of came to an end on April 28th, 2005, when he passed away. He was still the reigning NWA Midwest champion and the UXW United States champion. And I really feel that uh, had his life not been cut short, Mr. Chris Candido would be one of these names that we would be talking about today, synonymous with the National Wrestling Alliance, like we do Dan Severn, like we do Adam Pierce, like we do Ken Shamrock, like we do uh, AJ Styles, uh, Jeff Jarrett, and uh, the list goes on and on. So take a moment of silence to remember the world's champion, to remember the legacy that he left. Um, yeah. It's kind of sad. Um, I don't feel like he got the recognition he deserved when he was alive. And I feel like he definitely doesn't get it now that he's passed away. Um, Chris, Big Chris Dog said he was the manager. That's what I thought too. And I, I think he even wrestled once with a match with Andy, uh, Andy Douglas? Chase Steve? No, I don't remember. I don't remember. I, I don't want to just guess. Um, but um, yeah. And, and the thing about it is, Chris Candido came into an unfavorable position when he won the NWA World's Heavyweight Championship. Now remember, ECW had just vilified uh, the NWA. Shane Douglas tossed the belt down, said it was a dead organization. Rest in peace. And, you know, uh, it hadn't been the same since Flair left. And, and he was using this uh, opportunity of this platform, Shane Douglas, to launch ECW to a nationwide audience, which it did. But, uh, you know, shortly thereafter, Chris Candido had the responsibility to pick up that title. And unfortunately, the NWA never really got behind Chris Candido. He didn't get a lot of title matches. Um, he was a product of Smoky Mountain Wrestling, and uh, he was one of Jim Cornette's guys. He made his debut, uh, not his debut, but he, he kind of became famous in Smoky Mountain, him and, him and Tammy. Um, but unfortunately... It wasn't meant to be. He ended up losing the championship to to um, Dan the Beast Severin, which kind of uh, it kind of helped, to be honest, to have Dan Severin become champion. That really helped establish the brand, especially when the NWA did so very little with Chris Candido. Unfortunately, again, I think they could have done so much more with him. And you know, I, I don't think there's any shame in losing the title to Dan Severin. But how cool it had. How cool would it have been if post TNA, post uh, you know the split between Impact and the National Wrestling Alliance, if if Chris Candido was alive to come challenge Adam Pearce for that title, if Chris Candido had survived, maybe he could have been uh, a two-time uh, NWA World's Heavyweight Champion. We'll never know because again his life was cut so short. But um, we do thank Chris Candido. And uh, we appreciate what he did. So just reading some more of your comments here. And I'm sorry, guys, that uh, the camera situation, I promise you, will be better next week. Uh, I've invested some money into making this a little bit prettier, a little bit fancier. You're going to see some better graphics here soon. And, and we're trying to get things amped up and taking it to the next level here on the uh, pre-party. But unfortunately... Uh, the, the only budget we have is no budget, so we make the best of what we can right now. The best I have is this $3 camera I got off of uh, off of uh, some Chinese website. It just isn't hitting it the way I was hoping it would. But uh, hopefully the next podcast you see will be much, much prettier. Now, I'm leaning down to read your comments here on Instagram. Um, Chris Drummond said, sad to say his significant other outshined him. Well, sure she did. She also made her way around the the locker room of the WWE. Unfortunately, opportunities like that don't exist for male wrestlers. Of course, she outshined him. She slept her way to the top. 
I mean, it's it's not hearsay, it's fact. So, um, yeah, I don't feel great about saying stuff like that because, you know, Sonny was everyone's first crush, I, I think, or Miss Elizabeth, one of them. Anyways, uh, what can you say, man? He didn't pick a very good lady. Uh, just more of your comments. Roscoe, time for the pre-party. Yes, Roscoe, and thank you for joining us. <laughs> we had fun on uh, Facebook a few days ago, Roscoe and I, and uh, hopefully you guys, uh, if you have Facebook and you're subscribed to the Alliance uh, Facebook page, that's at the Alliance blog, check it out. We did a test over the weekend that went pretty fun, and uh, it kind of shows off some of the things we're going to be able to do here soon. Uh, Michael Manning from the UK is also here. Yo, baby, yo, baby, yo. That PN News vibe, I dig it, brother, and I love it. Stan the Man says, finally. Yeah, man, I had, had a few hiccups, but we're getting there. Hey, it's a work in progress, baby. Um, I mean, we've got intros. We're going to have outros. We're getting there. We're doing it. We're doing the damn thing. Uh, so this week, we're talking about... Um, it's crazy. We're actually on Facebook right now. If you guys didn't know this, I'm streaming on four different platforms. Uh, well, I guess now we're back down to three because I, I killed the stream for uh, Twitch. But we're on Instagram. We're on YouTube and Facebook. That is pretty cool. Tell me who else is doing that. Uh, Roscoe says, first time I heard about Chris Candido was from Cactus Jack and a poem and a poem about him. I don't think I ever heard that poem. I see that we're getting some lag on Facebook, so again, I apologize, guys. Maybe next week we won't stream onto Facebook. We'll just stick to YouTube and maybe stick to Instagram. It seems to be the best at what we're trying to accomplish here. Um, so, yeah, uh, the NWA. The NWA this week is promoting the, uh, the rivalry, the feud of Tim Storm and Nick Aldis. Now, this was the storyline that carried the National Wrestling Alliance from 2017 when the NWA was bought by Billy Corgan all the way till the first episode of NWA Power. Now, granted, I know, guys, I know that we had the feud with Cody Rhodes at All In, but honestly, the underlining story for all of this, what led to NWA Power's inception, uh, creation, promotion, uh, television show was none other than this, than this feud with Tim Storm. Now, Tim Storm, we talk about Tim all the time on this show because, quite frankly, he's a gem. He's a great human being. He's a good guy. And uh, he also was the world's heavyweight champion when the NWA was purchased from Bruce Tharp, when, when International Wrestling Corporation was sold to Lightning One. And uh, when all the trademarks and all the uh, all that good stuff switched hands, now you know there was such a clean transition between the two eras of Lightning One and International Wrestling Corporation. It wasn't as seamless when uh, Pro Wrestling Organization that was the the that was the era before that was um, Robert Trobich's NWA. That was guys like David Marquez and. Fred Rubenstein and Jim Miller and and uh, Bill Barons and Mike Porter and all of those guys. That era came to an end when they lost the lawsuit to Bruce Tharp, and we'll get into that another day. But event essentially, Bruce Tharp gained control of the NWA through a lawsuit where the NWA uh, surrendered all all of its rights to the trademark and the properties of the NWA to Bruce Tharp, and that's what started that next version of the NWA during that time um, you know the transition from world champion you know this was also during the best of seven series the seven levels of hate which is now available on YouTube dot com uh, I think it's I don't know Adams uh, Adam Pierce's YouTube page but you could google it the seven levels of hate is up there for free now you can watch it you could see exactly what happened the story behind the story where you know they were filming a documentary talking about how that they can make uh, a pro wrestling match significant through multiple wrestling promotions with a blueprint of how a feud should be done and what we also got was a story of the NWA kind of falling apart towards the end of that uh, the regime of the Robert Trobich era into the Bruce Tharp era what you don't get is after Pierce surrendered the heavyweight championship 
in uh, in uh, Australia at Warzone. That was it. That was the end of the the Trobitch era of the NWA. Um, some of the champions stayed on, were continued to be recognized, but that was the World Heavyweight Championship had a break right there, where they had to crown a new champion, and they did so at our friends over at uh, Dangerous Adrenaline Wrestling Gladiators. That would be NWA Dog. They had a eight way match, which became a nine way match, which became uh, Tokyo Monster Kahagas winning the title. So there wasn't a direct correlation from Kahagas pinning Pierce or. You know, everyone kind of predicted Damian Wayne was going to be that guy. In fact, the NWA more or less admitted that Damian Wayne was going to be that guy. But he never got the opportunity. Before you know it, Cahagas drops the title to Conway. Conway takes the title to New Japan. Has all this great stuff going on in New Japan. Drops the title to Kojima. Wins a title back from Kojima. Drops the title to Tenzin. Tenzin drops the title to Dane. Dane drops the title to Tim Storm. Now, all the other champions were basically sealed and either, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, they forfeited the titles, or they stripped them of the titles, I should say. Like, um, the Heat Seekers, gone. Uh, Barrett Brown, uh, actually Barrett Brown, yeah, Barrett Brown, gone. Uh, they didn't continue to recognize him as champion. They didn't recognize, uh... Mustang Mike as the national champion. They didn't recognize Cahagas as the North American champion. Um, they did continue to recognize Jazz, which is an interesting story, but I'm not exactly sure why they did that. Um, Kakushi says to this day he hates that it became a nine-way match, and I think Kakushi was there at that event. And uh, the story that I heard is that uh, they stooged everybody. Everybody everybody in the locker room got stooged on that one. That Cahagas rolled up. He wasn't even at the venue when the show started. And uh, they, they really they really kind of... Uh, well, I thought Damian Wayne was going to walk out of New Jersey that night as world champion. And I think a lot of other people did too. Uh, Roscoe says, And on these, on, on these fists like rocks, he will... I'm so sorry. I don't have my glasses on and the monitor is much further away. So I'm sorry if you get weird angles today. And on these fists, like rocks, he will feed, oh, as though they were two giant Cheetos. And when my mission is complete, oh, I'll see a skid inside the Speedos because I'm going to beat Candido. Bang, bang. That's, that's awesome. Thanks for sharing that, Roscoe. Kukushi corrected me, Mustang Mike was the North American champion. Okay. I stand corrected. Um, Coke time. Anyways, I hope you guys are all doing well, staying safe, washing your hands, coughing into your sleeves, wearing masks when you step outside. I know this is a weird time in the world, and all we have to look forward to is pro wrestling, and uh, even that's getting harder and harder to come by. I know that it, if you guys go to certain uh YouTube pages, you'll see some fresh wrestling content. If you're not familiar with promotions like Dangerous Adrenaline Wrestling Gladiators, they put a lot of their content up there on their uh, on their YouTube page. I would recommend checking that out, subscribing, getting a good chance to see some wrestling. Um, let's see. So Candido, again, he was a... Sad to see him go. I think so much could have happened with Mr. Chris Candido, and uh, unfortunately, that just never happened. So, the NWA brings us to power. Of course, the the show is on a bit of a hiatus now. We know that the superpower is kind of taped; it's in the can, and they're I think they're going to string out more and more episodes of NWA Power, which is cool. I love the fact that we're going to get more and more NWA Power, but I understand they're not going to do that until they have more and more. Uh, knowledge of when they're going to be able to do the Crockett Cup. All of this was supposed to lead up to the Crockett Cup. Uh, more of your comments. Uh, not the first time you stand corrected. DKM, I make mistakes all the time. I, I, I own my mistakes. You know that. Roscoe, he lost to Greg Anthony for the NWA national title. Anthony was a national... I know he was national champion, but was he national champion when the, the NWA changed ownership? Okay. 
I'll be honest, guys, that was a hard time to follow the NWA. Um, I wasn't really happy in the Bruce Tharp era. There were moments of uh, bright, there were bright spots. Tim Storm was one of those bright spots, and I'll get back to what I was saying about Tim Storm here in just a second. Um, Kakushi says, go to GNC and get your multivitamins. I think that's good advice, guys. Get those multivitamins. Um, Stan says, wrestling all over YouTube to last us for years. That's true, Stan. You are correct. There is so much pro wrestling content out there that if you haven't seen it, now's a good time to try to get caught up on it. I'm wearing my uh, The Best shirt, which is uh, an homage to Scorpio Sky, who is the best. He can be seen on All Elite Wrestling, but before that, wrestled in many promotions. Um, yeah, go to YouTube. You can watch all kinds of wrestling. Um, DKM says, Anthony and Mike traded the national title. Casey, Car Casey Carlisle was a bright spot for the Tharp era. I liked Casey Carlisle a lot. She would actually been on our show before. She's a sweetheart. And uh, I'd like to talk to her again. Hopefully we can get her in the near future. Roscoe, I've been watching NWA Inferno. It's awesome. Roscoe, help me out. NWA Inferno, was that the promotion? Uh, did that feature matches from the NWA Showcase and NWA on Fire? Because there was, at one point, there was a syndicated show that the uh, the Savoldi syndicated into this Atlanta, excuse me, this Australia TV market, that they would showcase matches that were like four or five years old from the um, uh, that were from the uh, David Marquez Championship Wrestling from Hollywood era, and that was so cool to me because there was this entire market in Australia that had seen some of these NWA matches. I mean, the NWA, Dave Marquez's version of the National Wrestling Alliance came to Australia. They actually had shows there. They uh, they crowned an NWA Australian champion. And then here you are a few years later, and they're showing matches from the showcase and uh, blended it with NWA on fire uh, branding. And he says, no, he's, he said... Uh, Sorry, there's an advertisement that just popped up on my screen. I don't even know how to get rid of that. Uh, there we go. And there's another one. Awesome. Uh, DKM says, at the end, Cahagas was the national champion. Okay. Ross says, he thinks it was Saw. NWA Ferno Saw, I think you're right, too. Um, Mike was a Mike was North American. Roscoe, it's from Texas because Jack Stane is world champion in it. It was Saw. Okay, see? You guys are great because you answer your own questions. That's awesome. Uh, and he says he is home. Okay. Chris Drummond says, I think Barbie Hayden was a bright spot too. Yeah, you know, the women's division actually was pretty decent during the Tharper. I mean, we had Garrett Santana, Barbie Hayden, uh, Casey Carlisle. Uh, I think Tasha Simone is technically in the, uh, not the Tharp era, but the Trobich era. But yeah, there were a, a run of good champions. And then, of course, Jazz was the champion at the time of the ownership change. And ultimately, I kind of wish we saw more from Jazz in the NWA, maybe NWA power. But that never that never happened to work out. So, But yeah, I mean, if you think about it, Barbie Hayden was wrestling uh, in China as, a, as the... Uh, I don't think she was champion then, but she was making her rounds in China with the uh, Mid-Atlantic Championship Wrestling Group. And then um, I know that Santana Garrett actually took the title to Japan with her for stardom and was able to represent the NWA while holding a stardom championship uh, at the same time. And, and stardom is considered to be one of the top, one of the premier wrestling promotions in, uh, a Joshi wrestling promotions in Japan. Um, Amber O'Neill, she was in the Bullet Club at the time. Uh, Amber O'Neill was just eye candy. She wasn't ever a really good wrestler. Um... That's my take. Uh, Mischief was awesome, but Mischief was way back. That's the Trobit chair. Mischief and um, Amazon Amazing Kong uh, kind of dominated the women's division in that era. <sighs> yeah, those Roscoe, that's what just what I was talking about. Did anyone ever see Amazing Kong and Mischief? Uh, I'd love to see them. I bet they were brutal matches. They were pretty awesome. In fact, uh, Amazon Kong, Amazing Kong, whatever you want to call her, she went by both names at different points. She was uh, the NWA's women's champion, and I remember her, her having a match with uh, Candice LeRae 
it uh, the NWA Showcase, NWA Pro Wrestling Showcase, which was early on in Dave Marquez's productions, and he she was just bent up uh, bent up Candice LeRae so many different ways, and now you see Candice LeRae on NXT, so it's kind of like comes full circle. Okay. All right, more of your comments. Um, Kakushi, anyone know why Jazz left the NWA when she did? Um, the only thing that I know is that um, I don't really know anything about that. I'll leave it at that. Anything else I, I would say about it, it's just me guessing. And I, I think that's irresponsible for me to make a guess about why a certain talent is no longer in the NWA. Nothing that's ever confirmed by... Dave Lagana and the way he made it sound when I spoke to him about it is that she'd be welcome back down the road. It just hasn't happened. It, I mean, we do know that she appeared in All Elite Wrestling shortly after um, the NWA crowned a new world's women's champion. So, I don't know. Um, Garrett was supposed to be a short-term t- champion. Cam, I did not know that Garrett uh, Santana Garrett was supposed to be a short-term champion, but she really did make the best of it. After she left the NWA, then she came on to be uh, the Women of Wrestling uh, Women's Champion, or whatever champion that is, the WOW Women of Wrestling's Champion. And uh, she had that crown for quite a while before Tessa came into the promotion, and that landed her in NXT. I don't even know if she's still in NXT. I don't know if she was a victim of one of those... uh, one of the layoffs, but uh, hopefully she's still around. Um, Lamb says he thinks that Jazz had personal problems uh, with the NWA, and that, that could be it. Um, DCAM says she uh, Amber O'Neill was a good wrestler. Um, not great, but, but solid. Okay. I mean, look, whatever. <laughs> I never thought she was that good. My, my personal opinion. Uh, Jazz was on AEW two weeks after dropping the title. Exactly. Uh, Jazz wanted her Aldis versus Jazz match. I don't think she challenged him ever in press conferences and interviews. Yeah, I mean, look, I don't, I don't, I don't mind intergender wrestling, but I don't think there should be intergender championship matches. Um, what TNA did with Tessa Blanchard, I mean. She's an extraordinary athlete. Uh, she does a great job, but I still wouldn't put the world's heavyweight championship on a female wrestler. I mean, I, I wouldn't put uh, Brock Lesnar in a ring with Ronda Rousey. I don't think it's believable. Um, but that, that it's not for me to say, right? Um, some of your comments here on Instagram. What do you think about the women's belt using the throwback version now? Maybe needs an update? The Hungry Gamer, I kind of like the throwback title. And, you know, the NWA, what makes the NWA different from everybody else out there is that they have history, right? I mean, WWE has history, yes. AEW doesn't have history. AEW just started. Um, Impact has history, but it's not like a very well-perceived history. I mean, their history is the NWA's history, so it's kind of like, uh, I don't know. It just doesn't make sense to me. New Japan has history. Um, but nobody has the history that the NWA has. Just nobody, nobody has it. So to use that title that Mildred Burke held, right? I think it had adds some um, je ne sais quoi, if you will. It adds a little bit of value because it's like nobody else had that kind of a title, um, and that's what makes it ten pounds of gold so awesome. You know, they didn't go with the big gold. They didn't go and get a new belt made. They went with the 10 pounds of gold because it's very recognizable, guys. That title's been around for so long. People are eyeballing that belt. That's that's history. That's tradition. That's the personification of legacy. You know. Um, now, granted, only eight of the wrestlers from the bygone era held that belt before being reintroduced to the Monday Night audience. Uh, but those eight bygone wrestlers are some of the damn most best wrestlers in wrestling. Ric Flair, Dusty Rhodes, uh Harley Race, I mean, um, I'm not going to say, uh, uh, Jack Briscoe, right? Uh, who am I forgetting here? I'm sure I'm missing somebody. Terry Funk. Uh, I don't think Gene Kaninsky held that belt, but I, I know Tommy Wildfire Rich did, but I'm not going to put him in that list. Um, but needless to say, I think that the more the NWA can liken itself to the past, 
the better it is for that because it's grabbing it's it's grabbing those old school wrestling fans to the program to NWA power. Um, then the hungry gamer says, "Do I think uh, the people who watch Power know the history?" No, I don't. I don't. I think the people who watch the Power are people who are just kind of tired of the same old thing. And they're looking for something different. Now, there are some people who watch Power that know the history, but not everybody. And I definitely think that the um, the NWA benefits from, again, attaching to its history. But to say that the, the, the common denominator, the most uh, basic NWA Power fan, knows the history? No, they don't know the history. They think the NWA became WCW in 1991 when Ric Flair left. I mean, there's just there's no continuity there. Um and the hunger hungry gamer says he thinks that there's a new fan base who just started with power and i agree with that i do 100% believe that but i also think that uh that history is so important to some to the to the brand if it wasn't important to the brand then why didn't billy corgan just start billy corgan pro wrestling smashing pumpkins wrestling alliance you know what i mean he could have done anything he chose the nwa because he knew that the history and the legacy of it had some meaning um, so let's see. Jazz wanted... Okay, uh, Michael Manning says, I've just seen the photo of Hogan with the 10 pounds of gold. Is it even real? Uh, it was a dusty finish. He won He won the match, but it was thrown out afterwards. He never really became a, the NWA World's Heavyweight Champion. Uh, DKM says he saw Amber O'Neill in person. That's great. I'm glad you enjoyed it. <laughs> You're wrong, DKM. Uh, uh, Big Chris Dog says Santana's still in NXT. Yeah, uh, Hungry Gamer also confirmed that. Um, Santana was on WWE Raw. I wasn't aware of that, but it doesn't surprise me. I, I really, to be honest with you guys, I don't watch a lot of WWE. Um, what I see is basically from clips and stuff that they post on social media. Uh, Jay soon will be getting hate mail from Michigan. I think it's Illinois you're thinking of, Kakushi. Um, DKM says Jazz had health issues. She made spot appearances but didn't do much in any match that might be true i, I mean look i I, only, I saw her at the 70th anniversary show she re- wrestled penelope ford it was a decent match it wasn't great penelope ford sold for jazz that's what penelope ford does so it looked good to me uh len says it's better than the giant women's belt absolutely that belt that casey carlisle and tasha simone carried around was a was a crime against humanity that belt was so just ugly and big, and I don't know anyone who who thought that belt was a good looking. Uh, J. Cal, big match this week. I'm not the biggest fan of AEW, but who are you rooting for? Dustin Rhodes versus Lance Hoyt, two former NWA World Tag Team Champions fighting. I'll be honest with you, I'm a big Lance Hoyt fan. Lance Hoyt has been on my podcast a few times, uh, on the Alliance Guys podcast and our old Talk NWA podcast, and Lance is awesome. Uh, not only is he a good dude, but he's paid his dues. I mean, he's literally been everywhere, right? He was in Impact years ago. He was in the WWE for a short time. He was in New Japan Pro Wrestling. He's a multi-time NWA Tag Team Champion. Uh, he held the belts with uh, Kid Cash, or was it uh, Jimmy Rave? I'm not sure. I think it was Jimmy Rave he held the titles, the NWA titles with, and then he also held uh, the titles with Davey Boy Smith, uh, as a killer elite squad. So yeah, I'm a big Hoyt fan. I'm, I'm rooting for Hoyt and that's not to take anything away from Dustin Rhodes. I think he's a legend and, uh, I, you know, I want to see him to continue to wrestle, continue to be successful, but Lance Hoyt is my guy when it comes to all elite wrestling. Gosh, you guys are giving me so many comments. It's hard to keep up. Uh, let's see. Uh, so Chris says, big Chris dog says he loved the big gold better. To each his own, man. Um, Roscoe says, after the NWA Jazz managed Rodney Mack and Jacus Pliskin as public enemy, that would have been a cool tag team to see in the NWA too. She's married to Jazz. Uh, excuse me, she's married to Rodney Mack, and uh, yeah, it would have been fun to see them uh, back in the NWA. Uh, DKM says, random fact: Amber O'Neill and Santana Garrett were once a tag team. Was that in uh, Shine? Shine Wrestling. Roscoe says, I call the new power fan base the Wrestling Days crowd, LOL. Yeah, uh, certain certain coffee drinkers who uh, think they know about wrestling tend to, uh, you know, 
marginalize the history, which I think is shameful, uh, but it is what it is. Michael Manning says, I hope the Hogan match is on film. Going to have to t take a look. For Michael, if you find that match, the Hogan versus, I think it was Dusty. I think it was Dusty. If you find that match, let me know. I'd love to see it. Um, DKM, you own the women's championship? You need to provide photos. Yikes. Um, let's see. Uh, Kakushi called the women's championship the legendary 37 and a half pounds of leather and gold. I think you're underselling how heavy that thing was. Willie Bowen says that the Wolf Sandies versus the current NWA World Tag Team Champion. So that would be Eli Drake and James Storm. I, I would, I'm all about that match. The Wolf Sandies should be in the NWA. Um, but I don't think they're going to, I don't think that'll happen anytime soon. Uh, Len says it was Jimmy Rave that teamed with, that teamed with uh, Hoyt for the tag titles. But Roscoe says it's Kid Cash and Davey Boy Smith. Uh, you, you both might be right, and I can look it up here, but I'm too busy doing a podcast. Um, Marty Skrull put over the NWA on the Ring of Honor podcast. That's great, man. Marty Skrull is the, the guy that is going to help grow the NWA. Nick Aldis has run with that ball as far as he could, and I think Nick Aldis has done a wonderful job as being world champion, but I think I think that Ring of Honor interaction, I think that Ring of Honor uh NWA menagerie, if you will, is going to bring uh, more fans to both products, and I think has ultimately a, a lot of potential to make money. And that's what's kind of most important is the, both all these wrestling promotions need to make money. I mean, that's how they survive. You guys who are out there buying the NWA Power products, um, buying that merch, or, or you know, subscribing to the Ring of Honor um, a subscription service, um, you know, that's. They're generating money, so that's that's good for them. <sighs> Raven Hoyt never won the titles, according to Roscoe, and I'm gonna just go with that. Uh, Hoyt also won the tag belts with Harry Smith. Yes, we we mentioned that the Killer Elite Squad. Um, Harley, I've now Harley, I've now read. I don't know what that means. And then Len says, "Total nonstop wrestling." Uh, total nonstop action wrestling world tag team titles two times with Kid Cash in 2004 so that answers that Phil Shatter should be back in the NWA Willie I think Phil Shatter is happy with getting that guaranteed NXT money and I'm sure he's happy being able to provide for his family and uh, yeah I'd like to see him return too but uh, I'm sure he'd like to take care of his family more of your comments down here the hungry gamer I think there's a new fan base who just started with power. You're correct. That's why I'm upset that the NWA owns no footage. Chris, they own lots of footage. They have they have three years of footage. Plus, they own the rights to the Paul Bosch library and have access to the Dave Marquez library. If the NWA wanted to start posting old matches, they have a lot of them to show. Uh, the Hungry Gamer says Lance Hoyt is amazing. He's a good wrestler. Agreed. I agree with you. Sorry, guys, that I keep ducking down, but I've got one camera right here for the YouTube and Facebook and then one camera right here for the Instagram. So if I'm bobbing and weaving, it's just because I'm trying to make eye contact with uh, both. Um, Jimmy Rave, Rock and Wrestling Connection. Yes, sir. And Kerouac is here. Kerouac is great. Kerouac uh, designed a logo for the alliance-wrestling.com website that we'll be putting on a t-shirt soon but due to COVID-19 Amazon won't let uh, any new publishers um, post any new uh, products for sale so basically we can't put that shirt out until some of this COVID-19 stuff clears up but soon um, you guys will see a new shirt for us and I hope you'll all enjoy it and, and maybe buy it of course that's if you are financially able to of course during this time I want you to focus on your families and taking care of yourselves, but uh, you know the the only support I really want from you guys is if you continue to watch this podcast and if you like it, share it with your friends, and if you want to subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel or to our podcast, the Alliance Guys podcast, it's available on all um, markets. Uh, I prefer you guys listen to it on Spotify just because I think it's hilarious that some chucklehead like myself has content on Spotify. Kerouac says, I hate that the NWA is stuck waiting while the two big feds keep putting out new content. Yeah, agreed. But I also want them to be safe. And I, it's crazy. It's crazy to me that, and I don't mean to assault anybody, 
but in Florida, they're opening up the state. They're allowing pro wrestlers to continue to, to have matches because it's considered uh, media. And although I don't agree with that labeling, um, you know, pro wrestling's got a pro wrestle. Pro baseball's got a pro baseball. Pro football's got a pro football, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I mean, they're talking about putting the NBA back in Florida and in Arizona. They were talking about doing um, a major league baseball season, uh, abbreviated, that would have uh, the the minor the um, spring training uh, teams, the the brackets set up that way. So instead of having an American League West and an American League East and all that stuff, it would just be here it is. This this is the the Citrus League and the uh, Cactus League. I mean, it's a crazy time. AEW filmed in Georgia and the NWA Power also filmed in Georgia. Yeah. And Chris brings up the point. Um, Impact puts out content as well. Yeah, and, and that's the thing, guys. Um, Georgia is opening up its its offices for this sort of stuff. So who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? Um, I'll be honest with you. I'm not going to be the first person back at the NWA Power uh, arena. I'm not going to go to that first show. Uh, I have... Uh, a daughter who's immunocompromised and I, I don't want to take any risks. Um, I'm more power to you guys who want to get out there and watch wrestling and, you know, be a part of it. I, I do too, but, uh, I have some more responsibilities and things a little bit more precious than pro wrestling. So that's where I'm going to put my focus and my energy at, but I want it to come back. I wish we were all watching brand new power today. I wish we were watching. I wish we were at the pay-per-view last week. It just, just didn't play out that way. Um, Kerouac forgot Impact exists. Marine said on Twitter that the event in Georgia opening again is not still 100% safe. Correct. Chris Drummond says, okay, tough question. Who out of the release talent could you legitimately see soon? A few NWA dates, all of them. Um, but I don't really want to talk about that. Maybe we'll get into it next week. Uh, more of your comments here on YouTube. Roscoe said, I watched Adam Pierce versus Phil Shatter on NWA Wildside. Yeah, that was a pretty good match. Phil Shatter and Pierce kind of had a rivalry that was short-lived, and I think they were planning to to progress with Shatter as a world champion or at least a top bid for that belt, and then he got signed to Impact. So that put the kibosh on that. Uh, Kerouac says, nothing's going to be 100% safe for a long, long time. The problem is there has to be a slow move to uh, master the engine again start up i i mean i don't disagree with that either kerouac but i'm gonna let everyone else be the guinea pig and i'm gonna stay home until we're, we're safer um he also respects the nwa for not making the talent work not only that but i hear according to the interview i did with um royce isaacs that they're being taken care of so i hope that's still true i hope they are being taken care of uh let's see willie Willie says the NWA Pro Wrestling is a legacy since 1948. Yep, and some would even argue since 1908, but uh, we're going to just go with the 1948 version because that is the National Wrestling Alliance. Um, DKM says Hogan pinned race, but Hogan had thrown him over the top rope earlier, and as we all know back then, throwing a competitor over the top rope resulted in an instant disqualification. Therefore, Harley Race retained the title. Um, Roscoe says... Is it? That's crazy. NWA was around just after World War II, or was it even during? No, it was after World War II. Um, but, you know, that the country, the United States was impacted, um, not to use that term to be funny, was impacted by World War II, and it affected a lot of what was going on in the country. To establish one world heavyweight champion um, not only gave those promoters uh, control of what was going on with wrestling, but it also gave them an opportunity to celebrate one wrestler, and that made their draw even bigger. Um, uh, Roscoe said World War II ended in 1945. Yeah, so uh, Kakushi says, I wish for $100 trillion tax-free. Kakushi, if you get $100 trillion tax-free, I'll just... All I need is a million. That's it. I, I'm not. I'm not a greedy person. Just one million would be nice. Um, Kerouac said, "I love old matches with the talent com commenting on it from their from their homes, like a watch along. Better than empty arenas." I agree, Kerouac. And I think 
I think that's a huge missed opportunity. And DKM is going to roll his eyes at me right now because I'm going to say it again. With as many NWA World Title matches that were televised, not televised, recorded over the last year, last three years. For every 10 pounds of gold episode, there was someone there taping that match. A lot of those wrestling promotions have the full matches um, that I'm sure a, for a fee could be negotiated to get that match to showcase, you know, the that challenge and Nick Aldis. Look, Nick Nick Aldis never went out there and just, you know, made someone look like shit. He went out there and put on a match and he he told a story and he elevated his competitor by wrestling with them. Um, I think the NWA is really missing something by not doing that, by not having having something like that. So we're all over the place, guys, and that's all right. It's fun to be all over the place. Uh, Kakushi says, Jay will be on my payroll. I'll take it. Willie Bowen says, Heather Monroe versus Thunder Rosa. I believe that match, did, did that happen in Hollywood? I think it did. If not, yeah, Heather Monroe's a great talent. She's been all over the world. She wrestled in China. She wrestled... Uh, in Australia, um, she's a product of the Santino Brothers, and uh, although Santino Brothers don't have a direct correlation to the National Wrestling Alliance, a lot of the talent that you see today, some of the upcomers in pro wrestling have come from the Santino Brothers. We're talking Jake Atlas from WWE's NXT, uh, Brody King in Ring of Honor, Tyler Bateman from Ring of Honor, um, uh, Douglas James from MLW. Um, and a whole slew of other talent that you might not be familiar with that are uh, developing a name on the Southern California indie scene. I do believe that the Santino brothers will be back at some point, but due to COVID-19, they had no other choice but to shut down uh, until it's safe to start uh, training again and start holding shows again. So they had to give up their lease, which it's painful, but, you know, so it goes. Time, I mean, we're in such a strange time right now. And it sucks to see so many of my friends who have these uh, careers in pro wrestling be put on the sideline while waiting for something to change. Um, but it's the best way to play it safe. So more of your comments. Um, Hungry Gamer, what happens to all this if when he loses the title, what will he do? I, if I'm booking the NWA, what I do is have Nick Aldis lose the title. I would have Nick Aldis lose the title to um, Marty Skrull straight up and Marty Skrull is the better man he wins the title and Nick Aldis goes back to the bottom and starts winning matches again and works on that formula and, and gets back to where he needs to be maybe they put him in a feud with somebody like Zicky Dice or uh, even um, oh my god I'm losing my mind I can't think of his name right now uh, Trevor Murdoch god damn sorry guys uh someone like Trevor Murdoch that he could help elevate him during this time where he is not the hot commodity and you could build up a guy like Trevor Murdoch to be an intentional threat for that world title somebody who's been looked at as a national champion or maybe TV champion Trevor Murdoch could be elevated in a feud with Nick Aldis and that could help elevate him maybe he'd be the one to take the belt off of Marty Skrull maybe it'll be Eli Drake to take the belt off of Marty Skrull but ultimately you could still continue to build um, lesser talents using Nick Aldis, and even you know even if Aldis loses, it's not the end of the world because he's still a former two-time champion, and he can still travel that road and get that opportunity and once again become world heavyweight champion. I think ultimately that's what I would do with him, but what the NWA chooses to do is is kind of uh, just wait and see. Roscoe says if they did empty arena matches, they will end up like that horrible Dawson versus Question Mark where. <sighs> Roscoe, yeah, uh, okay, so you guys remember the empty arena match with uh, uh, the question mark and the Dawson, I think it was Zane Dawson, which that was silly, and I, I know they did that to waste time to fill up space, um, I don't want to see any more of that, but we did get a pretty decent Josephus versus Tim Storm match in an empty arena, and if it was done like that, I wouldn't have a problem with it, of course the WWE and AEW are kind of showing you what they could do in empty arenas, and um, you know, it's it's the format itself isn't unlike what Championship Wrestling from Hollywood's been doing or what NWA Power is doing, uh, but it would just uh, be Sam's crowd, and I think that's okay. Um, but it, it's got to be safe for the competitors, and that's what's most important. So, I 
I don't care if we don't get wrestling for a while, as long as when we do get it, everyone's focused and puts on a, uh, the best product they can. Uh, this this is the NWA. Join the podcast. Uh, my good friend Gary Horn, welcome to the show, man. I appreciate you uh, checking us out. Of course, you guys, I, I would highly recommend you check out Gary and this is the NWA. Um, when it, whenever their shows hit on YouTube, make sure you're tuning into them because you're getting great NWA quality content. Um, let's see. Uh, Monroe Face, Jazz, and Allison K, but not Thunder Rosa, but would be her third chance at the title and a third loss. Yes. Uh, Kakushi says, I hope they do not show Aldous versus Storm from Combat Zone Wrestling. That was a mistake. It might have been. It seemed like it was a misfire. The fans didn't really eat it up. Tim Storm wasn't 100%, and uh, the match is what it is. Uh, Roscoe says he does want to see a, that title match, and he wants to see Eli Drake, uh, Eli Drake beat Nick Aldous, and I kind of do too, but I'll take what I can get. Um, Kakushi says, I want to see him lose to Davey Boy Smith Jr. I'm sure you're not alone in that either. Uh, I'd pay to see Trevor Murdoch and Nick Aldis uh, feud. And I would too. I would too, uh, Gary. I think that match would be great. They had a, That match that they had was pretty good. You know, and Imagine if the title was on the line. Or imagine if the opportunity to challenge for the title was on the line. Uh, Len says that the empty arena match uh, with Tim Storm was amazing. I agree. Uh, Roscoe says Jack Stain for world champion. I also agree. Oh my god, we're running out of time here. Um, and uh, this is the NWA puts over the Alliance blog because, well, it's a mutual admiration society. We love each other. Uh, more of your comments down here on Instagram. Uh, Kerouac says he doesn't see Aldis losing it for the rest of the year after this. I don't disagree with that either. Uh, the fact is that uh, we might not get another world title match this year, and that's a real possibility, guys. It's a real possibility. Uh, Michael Manning, I think you're taking off to go watch the NWA. Go for it. We're going to end this very, very soon. Um, leading into the first pay-per-view, Into the Fire, there was a number one contender for a match taped for the power, but it was never used. They just announced James Storm as the number one contender after Do You Know Why? Uh, essentially, uh, the answer that I got was that they weren't happy with the end result of the match. Um, watching it live, I could tell you it was kind of a cluster. Um, it didn't make a whole lot of sense, and I think uh, I think ultimately they just opted not to televise it. I, I think in retrospect they should have, even if it was bad, because at least it would have made more sense with the storyline. But then they went with the whole angle that James Storm was being... Um, being uh, screwed over, like the Illuminati was getting to him, and it turned out that was strictly business, so it worked on that. Uh, thanks again for a great episode. Thanks, Rosker, Rosker, Roscoe. Uh, check out the Cactus Jack promo on Candido if you can. I will look for that. Um, so that's going to do it, guys. Again, I want to thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you next week, hopefully with a better, uh, a better.